Hello Year 6, welcome to Thursday's Literacy Lesson. So we're carrying on today on the same text as yesterday if you are in the train book, aren't we? So well done to those yesterday that sent your pictures in. I could tell you'd really watch my video because you only did the questions in the book that I asked you to and then you had to go at the ones that I had set as well. And I was really, really impressed when I checked Kahoot to see who had had a go. You all did absolutely brilliantly, so well done. I could really tell that you had tried your best, so well done. Okay, so carrying on then, so turn to page 21. So if you're in this book, still in the train book, um, if you're in the monkey book, don't worry, I'll go over yours in a minute. So we're still answering inference questions on a letter from E.B. White. Okay, so page 21. So... Before we even think about the questions in the book for today, I've got a couple of questions for you to have a go at first, because we went over word meaning questions yesterday, didn't we? OK, so where you've got a sentence, you've got a word in the sentence and I want to know what that word means. So before we start these four, I've got a couple of word meaning questions just to practice what we did yesterday. Now, if you can't remember what some of the words mean, then go back, have a look at your notes that you made yesterday. And we did do our Kahoot quiz, didn't we? So hopefully some of them have sunk in. But remember, you can always nip onto dictionary.com if you're not sure. So let's have a look then at the question. So the first one that I've written for you then. So this is the sentence from the text. And then this is your question. So it says, I do not refine, sorry, I do not find them repulsive or revolting. So revolting is the word that we're looking at in italics. So it says, what is the meaning of the word revolting in this sentence? Now, I think most of you already know what revolting means. Okay, So remember, you need to give me a word or a phrase that means something similar to revolting. I'm not going to go over it too much, though, because I think most of you will already know. Okay. Remember, you can always go back to the text, find it, and that might help you. Okay, if you're stubborn. Okay, so that's question one. Pause the video now if you need to jot that down. Question two then is, I tossed the box on my dresser. What is the meaning of the word toss in this sentence? So for this one, you could replace this word with something else. Have a think how she might, how she might put the box on the dresser. Okay, have a think of another verb that you can use to replace tossed. Okay, so your answer, your answer would just be something like, um, the meaning is something. Okay, so I'll move out of the way now so you can pause and do that one. Okay, number three then. So this is the third one I've written for you. It says, I took a razor blade, cut the sack adrift from the underside of the shed roof. What is the meaning of the word adrift in this sentence? Okay, so this one's a little bit of a trickier one. You might not know what adrift means, and that's fine. You could go on dictionary.com. But remember, when you go on dictionary.com, you've got to make sure the bit that you choose, so the bit, the part from the definition that you choose, fits with your text. So go on dictionary.com, have a look what it says, then come back to your text and think, put the sack adrift from the underside of the shed. Would that make sense? Okay, just make sure it makes sense before you write it. Okay. So, we're going back now to the questions in the book. So, we're on question five in our book now. Okay. And it says, E.B. White says, a book is a scene. What is this an example of? Circle one. Okay, so in there then, you've got simile, metaphor, and personification. And we've gone over those quite a lot recently. Remember, a simile is when you compare two things using like or as. A metaphor is when you say something is something else. So, like the sky is a blanket of darkness. And personification is when you say that something can do something a human can do but it's not human. So, for example, the moon watched over the town. Okay, the only one on this question then that we haven't gone through recently 
is an idiom. So I've put something on the board here to help you. So an idiom is a phrase or description that has a different meaning than what the words actually say. For example, he's the class clown or wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay. Um, another example would of an idiom would be um, he was over the moon. He's not really over the moon, he's happy. Yeah? So now go back to this then. A book is a sneeze. I want you to have a really careful think about whether you think it's an idiom, a sim simile, a metaphor, or personification. Don't guess. Okay? Question six then. Does after reading the letter, how would you describe E.B. White's personality? Use two adjectives to describe him and then explain your choices. Now, I put listed of the text and popped it on here. I'm going to come up with one adjective and show you how you need to answer it, and then you need to try and come up with another one. So remember, an adjective is a describing word. So we want two words that describe what E.B. White's personality is like. And remember, his personality is what kind of person is he? Nothing to do with what he looks like. Personality is in here. Is he funny? Is he silly? Is he a nice person? Is he kind? Those kinds of words. Okay, let's have a look. So one cold October evening, I was lucky enough to see Irenia Kovatica spin her egg sack and deposit her eggs. I did not know her name at the time, but I admired her. And later, Mr. Willis J. Gurch of the American Museum of Natural History told me her name. When I saw that she was fixing to become a mother, I got a stepladder and an, and an extension light and had an excellent view of the whole business. A few days later, when it was time to return to New York, not wishing to part with my spider, I took a razor blade, cut the sack adrift from the underside of the shed roof, put spider and sack in a candy box and carried them to town. I tossed the box on my dresser. Okay, I'm going to choose this bit. Okay, so I've got a step ladder and an extension light and have an excellent view of the whole business. So I think this tells me that he is quite a curious person. Yeah? He's very interested in this spider, isn't he? Yeah, he's gone and got a step ladder, he's got, gone and got a light, just so he can watch what this spider does. So I think he's quite a curious person. So I'm going to put curious because he went to a lot of trouble just to watch the spider. Okay? So you haven't just got to do it from this part of the text. You can use any part of the text. You can use what you want to do, but then the question does ask us, for two adjectives, doesn't it? So you do need to do another one. So curious because he went to a lot of trouble just to watch the spider. So I've given my adjective here and then I've explained why I think he's curious. Make sure you try and use your best handwriting. Okay, so just to watch the spider. Okay, so you have a go now then, have a look at the rest of the text and see if you can find another adjective that describes E.B. White and what he was like. Number seven then says, do you think this letter explains why E.B. White wrote the book? Explain your answer. Okay, so... It does say at the bottom, I haven't told you why I wrote, I haven't told why I wrote the book, but I haven't told you why I sneeze either. Okay, so it's she's, he says that he hasn't told us why he's written it, but I think there's hints in there. So if you go back to the second paragraph, what's he saying about spiders? Okay, so he quite likes spiders. But do, do most people like spiders? I'd say not really. So it says, doesn't it, I think it's too bad that children are often corrupted by their elders in this hate campaign. Spiders are skillful, amusing and useful. 
So I think he wrote the book. Something I think the reason he wrote the book is something to do with that. What's he trying to get people to do, do you think? What does he want children to do? Okay, so you have a go at answering that question. Just don't forget, though, it's a two-mark question. So don't forget to explain your answer. Okay, so that's your reading for today. If you are in the book with the monkey on the front, then, you are continuing to answer retrieval questions again today. And you are on pages 24 and 25 today. I was really impressed with your work yesterday on habitats. It looks like you learned lots about the different habitats of the world. So that is brilliant. Well done. Your text today then is called Flat Stanley. Now you might have heard of Flat Stanley. It's quite a popular children's book. So you might already be familiar with it, which is brilliant. So you have a good read through your text then. It's a little part of the story. Um, and we're going to have a look, a look at some of the questions together. So, question one then. So question one and two are on this first paragraph. So this very first bit here next to your picture. Let's have a read. It says, breakfast was ready. I will go wake the boys. Mrs. Lambchop said to her husband, George Lambchop. Just then, their younger son, Arthur, called from the bedroom he shared with his brother, Stanley. Okay, so, let's have a look. So, the first one says, at what time of day is the text set? How do you know? This is a big giveaway. Breakfast was ready. What time of day do you have breakfast? That will help you with that one. Number two says, is Stanley older or younger than Arthur? Now, let's have a look. Okay, so it says, just then, their younger son, Arthur, called from the bedroom. He shared with his brother, Stanley. So, if it's their younger son, they've got two sons here, haven't they? They've got Arthur and they've got Stanley. But if Arthur is their younger one, then Arthur must be younger than Stanley, mustn't he? Okay, so that will help you with questions one and two. Question three then. Let's have a look at this part. So, hey, come and look, hey. Mr and Mrs Lambchop were both very much in favour of politeness and careful speech. Hey is for horses, Arthur, not people, Mr Lambchop said as they entered the bedroom. Try to remember that. Okay, so number three then is about this part. And it's saying, why do you think we've got exclamation marks there? Why, why have we got an exclamation mark after hey, and after come and look, and then after hey again? What does it tell you about the way he, that he is speaking? Okay, so question four then. So, hey is for horses, Arthur, not people. So your question is, why does Mr. Lambchop tell Arthur Hey is for horses. Okay, so why does he say that? And it says it here. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop were very important, very in favour of politeness and careful speech. So that's why, that's why he says it. Because Mr. Lambchop doesn't think it's very polite to shout hey. Okay, so he wants his son to speak politely um, and use careful speech. So something about that would be your answer for question four. And I think you're going to be absolutely fine with question five and six. Just make sure you look for those key words. So question six says, copy a word from the text that shows Stanley isn't worried about being under the board. So board is probably going to be your key word. So find where it talks about that in the text and then see if you can find a word that shows you he's not worried. Okay. So that's your reading work for today. Word power then, we are moving on today to page 26 and we're doing blending words together. Okay. So up at the top then, it says new words can be created by blending other words together. Spoon and fork blended together makes a spork. Okay. So let's have a look at the next ones then. So can you draw lines to match these blend words with their definitions? So have a look. So the first one is brunch. 
So then have a look at the definitions and see if you can figure out which two words have been put together. So brunch, I know that sounds a bit like lunch. So there's one in the middle that's got lunch in and it's breakfast and lunch put together. So have a look and match those up. On the next bit then, it says which words might have been blended to make these words. So your first one, we'll do together and then you can have a go at the next one. Your first one is ginormous. So if you split it up, what could this be short for? So gi could be short for giants. Or it could be short for gigantic. Okay. Could be either of those, couldn't it? I'm not sure. Okay, but they both mean the same thing, don't they? What does that mean? They both mean big, don't they? Normous, then. I think there's only one word that could be short for. And that's going to be short for enormous. Okay, so they're the two words that have been blended together to make ginormous. Your next one, then, you've got to do is zonky. So have a think. What animal can you think of that begins with a Z that might have been blended with donkey? So you write those on there. Okay, the next one, then, it says think of a few words to describe a character you like from a book or film. Then try blending some of the words you've written together. So, I've picked my favourite character. My favourite character is Nemo. Okay, so I've done, I've split it up into the two parts that you've got in your book. So, my favourite character is Nemo. So, words to describe them. Right, let's write a couple of words. So, a couple of adjectives to describe Nemo. So, I'm going to put cute, orange. He's very orange, isn't he? Um... He's small, maybe. Or I might put tiny, because that might be an easier word to blend. Um, what else could I put? Stripey. Okay, so they're my adjectives. So try and write a few, because then that might help you when you are blending them down here. Okay, so blending my words together then. So I've got subscribe and put some of these words together. So let's have a think. It hasn't got to be a word that makes sense. It hasn't got to be a word that exists. You can make it up. So let's have a think. Um, I'm gonna go with Smitey. So I've made, I've blended here small and stripy to make snipey. Okay, have a go, see how many you can do. I look forward to seeing which characters you choose to describe for yours. Okay, that's all of your literacy work for today. Make sure you try your best, just like you would in school. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of your pictures on the email later today. See you tomorrow.